In video number 81, I showed how to use a 3D hall sensor to create a high precision axle sensor for G scale. One video later, I combined it with an IMU and was able to record the track map of a G scale layout simply by letting a sensor equipped train run over it. Kind of nice, you might think, but can such a do it yourself track measuring car? be created for HO or even N scale as well? In this video I am trying to shrink it. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. The most difficult element to make when building a track measuring car, particularly for smaller scales, is the axle sensor. It is used to count the revolutions of the measured axle. From that we can calculate the travel distance by multiplying with the circumference of the wheel and if we divide the distance by the time it took to travel, we get the technical speed of the car. Once we have that, it is a piece of cake to calculate scale speed and display it using metric or imperial dimensions. A common way to measure the axle rotation is using an optical sensor like a reflective light barrier that detects black and white pie slices painted to the inside of the wheel. This is the method Pico is using for their Pico Messwagen and it might be a suitable solution for a mass production process with appropriate tooling. For a hobbyist approach, I think installing an optical sensor underneath the car and run electrical or even worse fiber optical wires to the control device in the inside of the car is too cumbersome. That's why I looked for a simpler solution and finally found the 3D hall sensor I showed in video number 81. With a 3D hall sensor it is possible to directly measure the rotation angle of the magnetic field. So if we mount a magnet on the axle of a car, the sensor can determine the angle of the axle by measuring the flux of the magnetic field in two dimensions. This works even if the sensor is not fully aligned with the direction of the magnetic field, which gives us quite a good level of flexibility for placing the sensor. And another welcome characteristic of that magnetic field is that it penetrates materials like plastic or non-ferrite metals like brass or aluminum, and to some degree it even goes through iron. As a result it is possible to install the magnet on the axle and the hall sensor above the base plate inside of the car and no wire connection is needed between magnet and sensor which makes the installation much simpler. For the rotation sensor I showed in video number 81, I used two 12 by 3 mm neodymium magnets, one on each side of the axle with a diameter of 6 mm. To hold the magnets in place, I used a 3D printed holder for each magnet with a cutout for the axle. The magnets attract each other and the holders keep them in this coplanar arrangement. The sensor itself is inside the car with a distance of about 35 mm or 1.5 inch above the axle. With this arrangement the magnets can freely rotate with the axle and do not touch on anything while the car is running on the track. And the sensor continuously measures the rotation angle of the axle and counts the number of revolutions to calculate distance and speed. So, to make the same concept work for HO and N scale, all I need to do is shrinking the magnet arrangement down to a size that fits the space available in those scales, and then shrink the size of the sensor board so that it fits inside of a core. Sounds simple and certainly much more feasible than shrinking the size of an optical sensor, right? The first step, of course, is to select a suitable car for the axle conversion. Ideally, you choose a two-axle car with a flat inside floor. A two-axle car is the logical choice because the middle of the axle is always below the center line of the car. If the car travels through a tight radius, the axle remains more or less orthogonal to the car. 
Even in cars with axles that can rotate a little bit to adjust to the radius of the track, the maximum angle of adjustment is relatively small, which means the orientation of the magnetic field remains stable. If you select a wagon with bogies on the other hand, the middle of the axle moves away from the center line when the car is going through a curve, which changes the direction of the magnetic flux as the sensor is mounted inside of the car to the ground plate. The bottom of the car is ideally flat, so that the sensor can be mounted directly above the axle using some double-sided tape. Unfortunately, real cars do not always meet these ideal characteristics. Here are some pictures of the HO scale car I selected for my tests. As you can see, there are some plastic domes sticking out from the floor, which are used to screw down the axle holders underneath the car. So it is not possible to cut them away. As a result, it is only possible to either install the sensor with some additional distance to the magnet or with an offset to the axis of the magnetic field. In the case of the N-scale car I'm using, it is even worse. This car has some steel blades attached to the floor to give the car some additional weight. Unfortunately, these steel blades are of a length that they only end over the center of the bogey. And yes, that is the other problem. I do not have a two-axle and scale car available, so I had to go and try with a four-axle car. It will be very interesting to see if this works, if at all. The next question is, what magnets can be used for smaller scales? For sure, the 12mm magnets I used for the G-scale sensor will not work. So I checked on Amazon for some smaller magnets. I found some with 3 mm diameter and a thickness of 1 mm and ordered them for the conversion of the HO scale car. 300 pieces for $13. And for the N scale axle, I found an even smaller type with a diameter of only 2 mm and a thickness of 1 mm. Here the offering was 100 pieces for $11. So, I certainly have no shortage of magnets for the moment. With such a small size, those magnets are too tiny to mount them using the same method I used in the case of the G-scale axle. Printing a magnet holder with the precision needed to make it work would be very difficult using a DFM 3D printer. Using a resin printer might work better, but unfortunately I don't have one. So I tried a simpler approach. I marked the wheel flange in two opposite locations and placed the axle on a vise with the first mark on the top. I then took a small file and simply created a flat spot on the axle just wide enough to place the magnet on it. Then I rotated the axle 180 degrees, used the marking as orientation and created a second flat spot on the other side of the axle. Then I placed the magnets on the flat spots on both sides of the axle and since they attract each other, they stay in place. It probably helped that I used a wheel set with a magnetic axle, but I think it would work the same way with non-magnetic material. The magnets attract each other and the flat spots make sure they stay in coplanar position and do not bounce to the side. The magnetic field goes through both of them and for the sensor, it looks like one single but fairly strong magnet. For a permanent solution, it certainly would be a good idea to secure the magnets with a drop of epoxy glue. But since this is just a prototype build, I did not even do that and so far I have never lost a magnet while operating the car. I then inserted the magnet equipped axles back into the car's axle holders. In both cases, as seen in these video clips, the axles could move freely without the magnet touching the car or axle holder. Very good. I then also verified that the axles are turning when the car is moving on a track. And that was looking good as well. And with that, all conversion work on the lower side of the cars was completed. And it indeed looks like making an N-scale sensor would be possible. Next, I mounted the sensor prototype board 
inside the core, in the area just above the axle with the magnet. For the G-scale sensor in video number 81, I chose the TMAC 5170 3D hall sensor. For this development version, I switched to another chip of the same family, the TMAC 5273. The difference is the communication interface. The TMAC 5170 is using an SPI interface, while the TMAC 5273 provides an interface for the I2C bus. Since the IMU is also using I2C to communicate with the microcontroller, it made a lot of sense to standardize on the communication interface. That way I only need two communication wires to exchange data between microcontroller, IMU and hall sensor and therefore I was able to make the sensors communicate with the IoT stick via the head connector. And as a result the sensor arrangement will very soon become a new function head for the IoT stick. So stay tuned, subscribe to the IoT channel and hit the bell icon so that you are in a premium seat when more information becomes available. At first I mounted the new chip on the base plate of the HO scale car and tweaked the IoT stick software so that it can display the results of the measurement. As it turns out, the axle rotation data is very precise and allows for measuring the position of the car on the track down to the millimeter. Also, the traveled distance and speed, including scale speed for HO, is quite accurate. Next, I installed the sensor on the end scale car and just to try out without even removing the ballast seal plates. I really was wondering if the sensor would be able to measure the rotation angle of the tiny axle magnets through the steel plates. And it did. Not as precise though as in the case of the HO car with a simple plastic base plate, so I finally decided to remove the plates so that the magnetic field seen by the sensor is stronger. So, it looks like shrinking the axle sensor to HO and N scale really is feasible. On the electronic side, things are looking good as well. For the HO scale measuring card, I am currently waiting for some PCBs which will fit in an HO scale card and serve as carrier board for the hall sensor and the IMU and provide a head connector for the IoT stick. These elements together will make for a pretty simple to install do-it-yourself track measuring car kit that can be installed in a wide variety of freight cars. And since the IoT stick has a built-in battery, a time-limited operation will work without power pickup from the rails. For the N-scale version I have selected this freight car to create what I believe is the world's first N-scale track measuring car. At least my research so far has not produced any hints for a similar product, but if you are aware of such a car, please let me know in the comment section of this video. I am currently designing a PCB that also will allow for an easy conversion. The plan is to cut open one sidewall and install PCB and IoT stick in a way that it is possible to read the display while the car is traveling. And of course, as always with the IoT stick, it can be connected to Wi-Fi so that you can conveniently read all the data on a PC screen or in the browser of your cell phone. I am currently working on that software and might be able to show something in the next video, so stay tuned. And that's it for today. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you have a better idea about how a 3D hall sensor can be used to create a track measuring car. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. Doing so helps to promote this video and the IoT channel in general because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.